So I promised myself I would never do this video. But there's so many YouTubers talking about it. I think I have to as well. We have a problem at a lot of our campsites in the backcountry in the bush, and we need everybody's help. And if we don't do something about it, yep. we're just going to sit down and watch them go. Yep. And four-wheel drive will be a thing of the past. And I've always just noticed all the trash out here. We pick up what we can, but there is a lot. I see it everywhere I go. I pull into these nice free campsites. In Canada, we have Crown Land, and in the States, there's BLM. But I pull in, and they are just completely trashed. These, uh, these fully grown ding-dongs come out to have a good time, and they leave it looking like a garbage dump. Just uh, no foresight that other people might want to enjoy the spot, or like even for themselves. Today, we're going to interrupt our normally scheduled camping style videos that we post on Saturday to talk about something that's really frustrating me right now. Uh, today we're actually doing some trail maintenance with trails for tomorrow and then we're gonna camp overnight down in Wipers and then... Uh... Yeah, the site was pretty dirty eh, when we pulled up last night. Yeah, they're cutting trees down. Yeah. Have you ever pulled into a backcountry camp spot and it's just gorgeous? And the spot you can tell has been used like this one, but it's left clean, no garbage anywhere, well looked after. Did you ever think that someone put some care and effort into it to leave it that way for the next person to enjoy? But it seems lately, a little bit too often, we show up to a beautiful spot, a great campsite, and after the first impression, and you stop and you kind of look, and you realize it's full of garbage, and it's gonna take some effort to clean up, and it just shouldn't be that way. So as of late, I've had a lot of conversations with other people, other YouTubers especially, and we're seeing the same thing. And But my question has been, why is that? Why are we seeing this more and more? Well, there's been increased pressure in the bush lately, we know that. Uh, a lot more people are getting out and enjoying. And where we assume that everybody knows how to look, at, look after the area, well, you know what? You can't know what you don't know. So perhaps that's kind of the issue. People just aren't aware. I know there's a lot of principles, like leave no trace, tread lightly, that educate on what we should really be doing. I know for myself personally, I had some good influences in life um, when we started camping when we were really young, and basically the principle was, when you leave your campsite, it should be like you've never been there. Nobody should know that you've used that spot. In other words, leave nothing behind. The way I see it, there's three types of people that use the backcountry for camping. There's those that practice leave no trace camping, leave nothing behind, do a good job. And if that's you, stick around to the end. I, I wanna talk to you. Uh, and then there's that group that maybe their practice can improve. Maybe, like I said, you just don't, you can't know what you don't know. So uh, a little bit of extra tips, a little extra advice, and they can improve their practices. And then of course, like Foresty Forest says, there's those out there, the ding-dongs, that quite frankly are the biggest source of the problem and it's the few. And I understand that we may never change that. These so-called adults who their mothers have a lifetime job of looking after them. And quite frankly, in the past few years, we've spent a total of about three months traveling and camping the backcountry in Utah, Colorado, um, Washington, Oregon, so on and so forth. That's a lot of nights. That's a lot of backcountry camp spots. And I have to say, I think I can count two camp spots that there was either a bit of garbage left behind and usually in the fire pit. Um, that's impressive. I really wish we can say the same thing here in Alberta. But unfortunately, out of probably every 10 backcountry campsites we come across, I think we're lucky to find two that are pristine. That's got to change for us if we want to keep this for our next generation. I want to see my grandkids enjoy the same privilege that we enjoy. Now, remember at the start of the video, I said if that's you, you practice no, leave no trace camping. Well, you and I have a responsibility. Um, there'll always be ding-dongs out there. So if all of us in Alberta, and even if it was just a dozen people that once a season, twice a season, just cleaned up one campsite? Somebody's got to do it. How can you not feel the need to respect it and take care of it? Like, how can these people not know how lucky they are to have all this right here? Really, people. I mean, pack it in, pack it out. It's pretty simple. Take a minute, pack it out, please. We all do our part. 
and also secure it so you don't lose it on the road. I think that would make all the difference. And we would overcome the work of the ding dongs. And we would keep all these backcountry campsites just gorgeous for the next people that show up to enjoy it as well. And quite often, you know, that it's just something that fell off the back of a vehicle, off of a quad. And I don't know, I feel we have a responsibility. I know I have a responsibility to pick up those pieces that fall behind. This bungee cord, for example, I don't think anybody meant to discard that. It's just probably purely accidental. And even the smallest of pieces it takes a second to just grab it. Fire pits are for campfires. They're not a burn barrel. So that should never be a place to burn garbage like this tin can and stuff. Uh, well, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't burn. Uh, so not a place to leave garbage. For those of you that like cooking on an open fire, keep in mind, uh, if somebody before you has burnt a whole bunch of garbage and plastic in there, I don't know if I want to cook my steak on that. So that's something I'm very cautious about uh, when I cook on an open fire. I make darn sure that uh, that's a clean fire pit. I want to know before I cook. So what we've done is having a place for garbage that is super convenient. So these dry bags with just a kitchen bag inside, it takes two seconds. If you don't drop it on the ground, of course, but that happens, you'll drop something. It takes two seconds to pick it up. It takes two seconds to put the garbage away secured. And it's kind of an added bonus actually with these dry bags. We feel the garbage is in a plastic bag. You roll it up, you tie it, and it's somewhat airproof. Stick it in the vehicle for overnight. You close it up, you've picked up your garbage and the added bonus um, keeps it away from the critters. So it's safer for the environment. It's safer for you, um, hopefully tougher for the bear to find you at night. Discarded pop cans is another one. We see those all over the place. Well, for one here in Alberta, uh, there's a deposit on that. So, I mean, you just throw money out the door. I know it's not a lot, but when you got a weekend's worth of cans, hey, there's a few dollars there. So that should be incentive to just bring it back home. You packed it in, in some kind of a container, can go back out in the same container. Or what we really like that's super convenient, is again, another dry bag just for the cans. And for just a weekend, we just put the pop cans right in the bag. But if we're out for a few weeks, it takes a lot of space. So quite easily, you just crush it, put it in the bag. We've carried like three weeks worth of pop cans just in that blue dry bag. It takes very little space. Now for my least favorite topic and that of human waste in the bush. Somehow it seems that here in Alberta, it's been, uh, it's become acceptable for people to just go wherever uh, in the bush. And quite frankly, it's disgusting. There's human feces everywhere in the bush, not far from your campsite. Toilet paper is kind of unsightly and very visible. Um, there's another way. And what we saw when we went to the Moab area, especially uh, the national parks on BLM land, uh, you can't go in without some type of bathroom uh, device, facility, whatever you want to call it. And if you're caught in that backcountry without, it's a substantial fine. But it promoted quite the shift in thinking for us. What I love about it is the culture shift. The culture shift. That's and the word is, they use. And this is what I, I hope happens in Australia. That's and it's, it's mate, great it that we got to see this because yeah. I'm gonna, you and I are going to be huge advocates for yep. this when we get back to Absolutely. Australia. And this is that piece that I'm talking about. You can't know what you don't know. Quite frankly, and I'm not proud of this, we were taught that, hey, that's what you do. You, you just go in the bush, just go out of the way somewhere, uh, out of sight, uh, but that's out of sight to you. The next people that are camping might decide to go for a walk. Maybe they got animals, maybe they got kids playing in the area. Dave was quite upfront about his experience and his poor dog, not a fun time for him. Somebody shit right there and Zeus just went right over there and rolled in it, no cat hole, no nothing. Then he jumped in the truck. See where that little white thing is? That's toilet paper. Runs his ass over there and rolls right in human shit. So what works for us is this lugaloo, this can, the seat is comfortable, which I gotta admit, I, that's the part that makes a big difference for me. Um, but you'll never to go to the bathroom in a larger bathroom with such a nice view. Um, you might as well enjoy the go, right? But that's been a game changer. We leave nothing in the bush behind. And it's no more trouble. So it's actually more convenient. I much prefer sitting on a can than trying to go in the bush and double bag it. There's no smell, there's no mess, and you just secure it. So you can 
put it in the garbage can at home. You can use uh, rest stops on the side of the highway, deposit in those public garbage cans, or even at a gas station if you have to. Ready for next time. Recent years, forest fires have been a huge problem. Uh, for me personally, I, I really dislike all the smoke in the air. We go out to enjoy, you can't see the views. Sometimes it's so thick we can taste it. Um, it's, it's a sign of our times, it's where we're at. Forest fires are more prevalent. Uh, but we play a part in that as well. I remember many years ago that once a campfire was out like this one, you would just walk away without too much worry. We've seen so many campfires uh, that somebody else left partially put out and we've showed up and the wind and all of a sudden it's flared up again. We don't do that anymore. I don't care how much fire is left, always, always put it out properly. Soak it, stir it, and soak it one more time. Leave it cold. Make sure your campfire is out because it'd be a real shame for us to come back here and the place is all burnt to the ground. That wouldn't be cool. And really, maybe I'm just being selfish. I want to come back to a pristine spot again. I want to come back to a forest fire. And we always try to keep a campsite better than we found it. At least a little bit better than we found it. So just like this campsite here, we should be able to enjoy it like nobody else has ever been here before us. All that should be left is a, a fire ring, so maybe a little bit of firewood for the next person that wants to camp. Otherwise, we should leave no trace. Okay, Gene, did we do it? Turn off the camera, Gene. Did we make did we make the time? Quick, the camera before they catch up to us. What are you talking about? The, the time before the ding dongs get us. There's no such thing as ding dongs. The space ding dongs, Gene. There's no ding dongs. Quick, Gene, put your hat on. I'm not putting any hat on. Put the hat on. No. I'll show you space ding dong. Oh. Didn't have to be so mean about it. Well, don't be an idiot. There is no such thing as space ding-dongs. Where are we, Mitch? I don't know. What is this place? I have no idea. What's that smell? I don't know. Where did all this stuff come from? I don't know. I don't like this. Yeah, I mean either. Okay. Ah, good. That's the last of my weekend laundry. <laughs>